So you're joining us uh, in late August, uh, we're out on farm here up in the Chiltern Hills uh, in Buckinghamshire. Um, we've actually been sat up in this uh, in this high seat for a little while um, watching a lovely roebuck. Um, we're actually leaving the roebuck um, alone on this farm. Um, they're starting to make a bit of a resurgence after we've we've really started to um, to knock out quite a lot of the fallow. Um, but it wouldn't have been well, it'd have been strange to have seen one on this farm a year or two ago. And we're now starting to see some some quite good bucks. So uh, we left that one alone. Um, dog managed to get roebuck fever uh, watching it, which was always fun to see. Uh, and we were rewarded uh, by leaving the uh, roebuck because this group of fallow that you can just see uh, emerging on the woodland edge started to come out. Uh, it was predominantly a group of does and were quite disappointed at first, but then two lone prickets came out with it. Um, and uh, and you'll see eventually we managed to uh, to get a shot on one of them. So not quite sure uh, why one of them uh, is jumping around there. I think presumably out of fright. Um, you will see shot clearly echoes in the woodland behind. Uh, and so most of the deer end up running straight towards us. Um, the one other pricket that was in the group makes uh, has already made a mad dash and disappeared into the wood. Uh, so sadly, no no chance of a second shot. So we've hopefully just um, got that on film for you. Uh, we're sat up in a uh, high seat looking out across Woodland Edge. Um, Roebuck actually came out initially, um, but we are trying to leave them alone on the, on this farm. Uh, they're just sort of making a bit of a comeback after we've started to uh, thin out the fallow prickets quite a lot. Um, left that alone. It's quite funny, the, um, the dog actually got massive Roebuck fever and started shaking uh, as the Roebuck was out in front of us. Um, Roebuck then uh, disappeared and out came a group of fallow does uh, with two prickets uh, in there. Um, it was really, really frustrating. You'll probably see from the footage they were very, very bunched up. Um, it was really, really difficult to get a shot. Um, and then eventually one of the prickets um, put his head up. I don't know quite what caught his head attention, but he sort of stood there transfixed for a while. So managed to, to head shoot him. Um, the other pricket then immediately ran into the rest of the um, rest of the woods almost as if he knew and then the does just stayed out uh, and so lingering actually ran to us the echo of the shot where they went back into the woodland actually drove them towards us um, you'll see on the fridge didn't make um, make any effort to, to reload because we we didn't have a, another shot uh, there for us um, anyway we're gonna get down go and get our fallow pricket and uh, probably get you some more footage as well here's our fallow pricket um, Nice headshot through there. Um, again, that was with Merkel K3 um, with some Fox 150 grain bullets. Um, in some ways, almost frustrating that actually so far I haven't managed to get a um, a body shot uh, with 150 grains. I'm quite keen to see what they um, what they do in terms of bruising and bits and pieces. But um, uh, Game Deal will be happy with this one. Um, nice headshot. Don't know about everybody else, but seeing so far this season quite a big variation in um, antler size on prickets. Actually, uh, seeing some that are really, really tiny, and then some that are sort of quite, quite long like this, or these these be long for us anyway. Um, whereas normally all the prickets are sort of quite uniform and quite sort of that sort of size. I would have said. Um, I mean, admittedly, he looks a bit shorter on this side actually. Um, it was taken from high seat just up there um, seems to be quite a good high seat for us at the moment um, and we are very lucky because we are going to um, growl it in with this which I think is I'm probably going to get the name wrong um, but a row catcher from Dane and Blades um, so this is the first time we've had this this out and comes with a nice sort of kydex sheath uh, first time we've had this out with this um, so see what it's like Hi everyone, um, so just a little bit of follow-up footage for you following that hunt footage. Um, so commented in the video about the variation we're seeing this season in fallow um, pricket antlers. Uh, and so just to give you an idea, um, that pricket um, in the video, sorry that's not the right one, um, that's one of his, his antlers there. And compared to some of the tallest we've seen um, so far this season, uh, which is this one here, it's about 16 centimetres. Um, and then the smallest we're seeing so far this season, which has been about five, six centimetres, 
but then interestingly as well also getting some that are very different probably easier for holding that way around um, much much thicker at the base compared to, to this one like this and it's it's just been interesting um, so far this season um, that we're getting such huge variation um, in some of the sizes and this is all from the same farm all pretty much the same herd um, so yeah again interesting to know your your thoughts whether you sort of see this sort of variation year on year um, or even within the same year um, it's a bit unusual for us here normally uh, if we were getting sort of antlers like this we'd see quite a lot of them like this where we're getting sort of one or two like this and then some that have got sort of very long um, spindly ones like that and then some that have got really small diddy ones like that um, we also covered in the um, in the video, and we're very lucky we've been sent this to, to try it out. Um, this knife here from Danum Blades. Um, it's the uh, Danum Blades Custom Road Catcher. Um, it's got a lovely uh, black plastic Kydex sheath with a bit of green on there, which actually helps you pick it out um, that much easier when it's uh, if you sort of don't have it in your belt and you leave it on the ground or something like that. Um, it's a 20 degree bevel um, on the blade. Uh, the blade is absolutely razor sharp, I should say. Uh, we're going to be testing it. We're allowed to keep it until November, December, so um, it's going to really be put put through its paces. Lovely bead blasted handle here, making it really super super grippy um, with G10 liners and nice green colour in here. I'm sure if you asked, you could have it done in sort of an orange or um, something like that if that was a bit brighter to help you pick it out. Um, overall length is about 230 centimetres, and the blade is about half of that, so sort of 115 centimeters and a lovely sort of laser I think laser engraved um, logo there um, very very impressed with it so far it's a nice shape nice fit nice hand um, nice weight to it um, yeah very impressed and we'll let you know how we get on with it and um, throughout the season anyway hope you've enjoyed this uh, this episode and uh, we'll hopefully catch you on the next one thanks very much